So in this last section, we're going to look at the range limitations depending on the settings and the picoscope uh, model variants. So the vertical range is the first thing we're going to look at. I'm going to look at it from a times one and times 10 pro perspective. So if we go into our um, picoscope here, what we've got is uh, one kilohertz coming in, one volt peak to peak as normal with a zero offset. So here we have our signal here. Now the probes uh, in all our experiments have been set to times 10. So the probe setting is uh, here. So we can now see that is on times 10 as um, before. Um, and if we now look at the uh, range available to us, we've got plus or minus 200 millivolts, which is this range here through to plus or minus 200 volts. And so you have to make sure that you've, uh, you're actually, for the signals that you're using, you've actually got your system set up. So if you're using very high voltage signals, then you want to be making sure that you've got your probe on times 10 and you don't overdrive the inputs to your um, test equipment. So what happens when you change the um, probe from times 10 to times one? Well, let's have a look and see what happens. So what I'm going to do here is let me just show you what I'm actually doing. Uh, so here's my probe here, and this is my uh, switch on the side, and I'm gonna change this to times one. So I've just switched that switch. Let me just go back to my screen. And now you'll see it's gone over range um, because it's now um, in the wrong scaling. So I'm gonna to go to the probes, go to times one, and then go to the vertical. Now, what you'll see now is this range has changed. So no longer does it go from plus or minus 200 millivolts to plus or minus 200 volts. Because it's on times one, it now will only let you go from plus or minus 20 millivolts to plus, uh, to, yeah, to plus or minus 20 millivolts to plus or minus 20 volts. So this is the vertical range limitation now, depending on the switch settings you've got on your scope probe. Now, what happens from a time-based perspective so let me just go to um, a, uh, the presentation here. So if you look at it from a time-based perspective, it does depend on the model variant that you're actually using. Now, if we go to the time base on this scope, now remember we are using the 2208B uh, and that's a 100 megahertz uh, bandwidth scope. And you'll notice it will go all the way up to one nanosecond per division. However, if I change the model, then this will change here as well. So although we're demonstrating here primarily the 2206, you may not be able to, depending on your model, you may not be able to get the one nanosecond range up here. So let's see what happens when you change our scope. So what I'm gonna do is shut this, um, uh, the Picoscope software down. So I'm gonna close that. And I'm now going to swap my screen over. And here's my uh, original 2208B. Uh, and what I'm going to now do is put the 2204 in, which is this one here. And this is the one my students use at university. I'm now going to swap this over and go to the app and open up the app. Now, because I swapped the scope over, the Picoscope, when the software starts up, does actually find out what the device is. Once it starts up, you'll see it will eventually find the device, the correct device. And there it goes, 2204A, it's found that and it's set this up. And now when we open all up, all the defaults, uh, remember the, uh, when it starts up, the defaults are for uh, scope probes as times one and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to reset all of this if, you, if you're changing your model. But what's more important in this particular exercise is looking at the time base. And if we look at the time base now, you'll see that this time base now only goes up to 100 nanoseconds per division. Now this scope, the 2204, a is actually only a 10 megahertz bandwidth scope. So it doesn't need to be, it can't go up into this higher, um, uh, higher uh, frequencies. And uh, so it's limited at this 100 nanoseconds per division. And so depending on the model you get, you get these limitations for it. And it's, it's just to um, uh, accept that you know, when you're buying a high performance scope, then you're paying more money and therefore you have the facility to actually sample at a much higher rate uh, and therefore look at signals, investigate signals, which are a much higher frequency. And that's where the money goes into scopes is actually monitoring that kind of thing, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that you realize there were limitations um, uh, depending on the model and also the settings on your uh, scope probe. And so let's just go back here and that's it for uh, this uh, video.